The story of the Orcs Buffaloes is really the story of two teams, but it's probably best that I start with the older one. In 1936, the Honkyu Electric Railway Company founded the Honkyu Baseball Club and joined the JPBL. Like their rivals over at Hanshin, the team also played in Nishinomiya. Honkyu was the only company that had previous experience running a professional baseball team, as they ran the Takarazuka Athletic Association's baseball team from 1924 through 1929. Hankyu founder Ichizo Kobayashi was a baseball visionary, and even though Takarazuka didn't pan out, he could see the future ahead. When he heard that the Giants were founded and that a league was going to get started, he got to work starting his own team. Under his guidance, the Hankyu Baseball Club was formed. Kobayashi also commissioned a ballpark. He got Japanese-American player Jimmy Horio to go to the Chicago archives and get copies of the blueprints for Wrigley Field, which Kobayashi handed to his designers and said, build me something like that. The result was Hankyu Stadium, which would be finished in 1937. As a result, Hankyu would spend their first season at Takarazuka Stadium. Hankyu would struggle early on, but in 1937, Mitsuhiko Ishida threw the first no-hitter in team history against the Tokyo Senators, becoming the first non-giant to do so. He also became the second pitcher with multiple no-hitters, tossing his second in 1940. Since Hankyu didn't have a nickname before the war, they remained the Hankyu Baseball Club until the nickname mandate came in after the 1946 season. The only hiccup was when the government, in their move to ban hostile words, demanded that they translate Osaka on their team flag from Latin characters into kanji. Kobayashi, a member of the Japanese House of Lords, refused. Political rival Nobosuke Kishi used this as a handy excuse to have him kicked out of the cabinet in 1941. When the nickname mandate came in after the 1946 season, the team originally chose the name Hankyu Bears in a clear attempt to emulate their rivals, the Osaka Tigers. However, after a terrible preseason, Hankyu's board got cold feet. A lot of them knew that bearishness in business was a bad thing and thought the nickname was a bad omen, so Kobayashi changed the name to Braves just before their first game on April 18th. Unlike the Atlanta Braves, the team never used any kind of Native American iconography. Instead, their logos and flags showed a Roman legionnaire. The early years for the Braves were largely uneventful. They joined the Pacific League in 1950 in an attempt to carve out their own fan base, but had ended up as just a mid-pack squad while the Hawks, Orions, and later the Lions positioned themselves at the top. They did have the distinction of hiring the first foreign players of the NPB era, when they signed veteran Negro Leaguers John Britton Jr. and Jimmy Newbery. A year later, they signed Larry Raines, who set numerous team records in 1954 before being recalled by Cleveland. They would replace him with a Cuban kid from the Dodgers system named Roberto Chico Barbon. Barbon spent a decade in NPB and later became the Braves' chief translator in the 70s and 80s. In 1956, the team got into a spat with the Osaka Tigers over a kid named Tetsuya Yoneda. Yoneda had initially joined the Braves, only to find out that the Tigers had offered him more money. The Tigers accused the Braves of colluding to keep Yoneda in the dark about the Tigers' interest in him, while the Braves accused the Tigers of trying to use the league office to pry away their new signing. Yoneda initially participated in spring training as a Tiger, but what the Braves lacked in money, they made up for in prestige. They offered Yoneda the coveted number of 18 right out the gate, and Yoneda decided to take the offer and become a Brave. He quickly gained the name the Human Locomotive for his ability to plow through hitters. But just as they got their first true face of the franchise, Kobayashi's health took a massive turn for the worse. Before he passed away in 1957, Kobayashi decreed that Hankyu must never, under any circumstances, sell the Braves. In 1961, the Braves almost pulled off the deal of the century. The Giants wanted Tetsuya Yoneda so much that they offered Sadaharu O. Had this gone through, the implications could have been massive. Like, I suck at alternate history, but I'd love to imagine just how things would have changed if this had happened. Hankyu, in a move of glorious short-sightedness that would haunt them for the next 15 years, refused. In 1964, the Braves signed two new foreign players, Daryl Spencer and Gordy Winhorn. Both ingratiated themselves to the team and the fan base very quickly and became the one-two punch of the offense. Spencer's 8.1 war in his first NPB campaign is the most ever put up by a first-year foreigner. Ever. In 1965, Daryl Spencer would introduce the concept of hitting for the cycle to NPB. On July 16th against the Kintetsu Buffaloes, Spencer completed the cycle with a triple, and celebrated like a madman. This confused reporters, so naturally, they asked him about it after the game. His response boiled down to, wait, you guys don't have that here? And he would explain that in the majors, hitting for the cycle was a big deal. Upon hearing this, NPB poured over their records and found that it had been done 23 times before, so they made awards recognizing the achievement and gave them out to everyone who'd done it previously. That same year, Spencer had a much bigger white whale to chase an offensive triple crown. No one had done it previously in the history of Japanese pro baseball, and he and Nankai Hawks catcher Katsuya Namura were both gunning for it. 
The two had met at the 1964 All-Star Game and had become fast friends, both harboring massive amounts of respect for each other, and they did their best to learn from each other and improve their game. But this would all come crashing down. On August 14th, Tokyo Orion starter Katsuji Sakai would walk him in all four plate appearances. The next day, Masaaki Koyama did the exact same thing. After the game, a tabloid quoted Koyama saying, I don't want foreigners to win titles. When confronted by teammate Stan Palace, Koyama vehemently denied that he'd said it, but now it was out there. He later clarified that he did it because he was scared of Spencer, but by now the first quote had gotten back to Spencer too. In fact, the media pressure was starting to get overwhelming, and Spencer took to riding his motorcycle through the streets of Nishinomiya at night to escape the noise. In early October, the Braves would face Nomura's Hawks, and Spencer got walked in all 12 plate appearances. After the second walk, Spencer turned his bat upside down in protest, going, come on, strike me out. But nobody did. People like to go on and on about the Bass incident, the Rhodes incident, and the Cabrera incident as infamous moments in NPB history, but very few people bring up this. Bass was a game and a half, Rhodes was one game, Cabrera was one game. This was five. The night after the third game, Spencer crashed his motorcycle, breaking his leg and forcing him to miss the last two weeks of the season. Nomura would win that batting triple crown, but Braves fans would always attach an asterisk to it. Spencer's 209 WRC Plus in 1965 remains a club record, but it was clear that he needed some help. Luckily for the Braves, the first ever draft was right around the corner. The first ever NPB draft was a clusterfuck. Scouting departments were almost non-existent, and teams often overreacted to recency bias in their decision making. Not Honkyu though. Honkyu would use their first round selection to take a power hitting outfielder from Hosei University, Tokuji Nagaike. He and Spencer would immediately become the one-two punch of the offense, and in his sophomore season in 1967, the Braves would finally clinch their first PL pennant and make the Japan series, where they fell to the Giants dynasty. They made it again in 1968, losing to the Giants again. In 1969, they lost Spencer but added two rookie sensations, Yutaka Fukumoto, one of the greatest base dealers in the history of the sport, and Hideji Kato, a sneaky good bat who batted cleanup after Nagaike, as a rookie. This dragged them to a third straight Japan series, and a third straight Japan series loss. Spencer would return as a player coach in 1971, and the Braves would make yet another Japan series. Take a wild guess as to what happened. And then it happened again in 1972. But, the next time they made it, in 1975, they would get a break. They wouldn't be facing the Giants. Instead, the upstart Hiroshima Karp had joined the party. With the help of new Venezuelan second baseman Bobby Marcano, the Braves dealt with them in six games. Finally, after all that, they'd done it. Wait, you mean the media branded it as a fluke because it wasn't against the Giants? <sighs> Typical. Well, they put that narrative to bed by beating the Giants in 1976 and 1977. The Braves made a fourth straight Japan series in 1978, but lost the Cinderella story that was the 1978 Yakult Swallows. In 1984, Greg Boomer Wells did what Daryl Spencer could not and picked up an offensive triple crown, as the Braves managed to make it back to the Japan series, where they lost to the Carp. From there, the Lions dynasty had dusted off its boots and started destroying all comers, and Honky was left holding the bag. So, in 1988, Honkyu did the unthinkable. They sold the Braves. The team was bought by Oryx, an Osaka-based financial services company. Oryx, seeing Honkyu Stadium as too big to be financially viable, moved the team to what is now Haramoto Field in Kobe. Officially, this was because of Honkyu Stadium's seedy reputation, but in reality, it was because they didn't want to pay rent to Honkyu or buy the stadium. To mark this occasion, they decided to change the team's nickname. After the vast majority of fans voted to keep the Braves' name, the team refused. Fans would then choose Thunder, named after the team's Blue Thunder batting line, but Oryx didn't listen to that either. They chose Blue Wave. Fans were not happy. A Braves Owen Don member was quoted as saying, it felt like the race was over before the gun went off. After struggling in those early years, by 1994 they had assembled a strong core around two stars that had joined the team in the 1991 draft. First round pick So Taguchi, and fourth round pick, Ichiro Suzuki. Ichiro would break the NPB hits record in 1994, and put up three straight MVP seasons as the Blue Wave made the Japan series in 1995 and 96. They lost to the Swallows in 1995, but beat the Giants in 1996. From there, the Lions and Hawks would keep the Blue Wave down. After losing Ichiro in 2001, and Taguchi in 2002, the team was left adrift. But they were soon offered a lifeline. 
Kintetsu was 1.3 trillion yen in debt and was looking to offload the buffaloes. Oryx pulled a backdoor deal and merged the blue wave with the buffaloes. I've already made a long video on the absolute mess this caused if you want to check it out. Following that, the newly named Oryx buffaloes were a shell of their former selves. The thing about merging two teams with fanbases that hate each other is that they both end up feeling insulted. The Osaka Dome became a cavern, despite a number of moves from Oryx that could only be described as fanservice. Eventually, Oryx realized that they needed to build a new core, and they got to work. Yutaro Sugimoto and Masataka Yoshida would be joined by Yoshinobu Yamamoto and Hiroya Miyagi, and the team would go from last in 2020 to first in 2021, helped on by Yoshinobu Yamamoto winning the first all-NPB pitching triple crown, meaning he would have won it had he played in either league. But they'd fall to the Swallows in the Japan series. They would run it back in 2022 though. Yoshida put up the second best hitting season in club history, and Yamamoto would win a second straight all-NPB pitching triple crown. They would meet the Swallows again, and despite Yamamoto going down in Game 1, the Buffs rallied to take the Japan series, their first in the merged era. The Oryx Buffaloes have a complicated history. While Oryx has no doubt been a net positive for the team's financials, they still have a lot of work to do after tanking their reputation not once, but twice. The recent winning has brought some of those from Osaka and Kobe back around, but with Yoshida now gone, and Yamamoto soon to follow, we shall see how long that lasts. Oh, no, no, no.